She treats depression from the fourth floor of her Skokie office building. She doesn't prescribe pills or antidepressants. She simply trains the brain. Her quiet, mild-mannered words walk you through the entire neurofeedback process. Now you're experiencing really good coherent breathing and deeper breathing, which is what we teach for stress reduction. So you're doing very, very good. Meet the director of the NeuroQuest Clinic. Uh, I'm Elsa Baer, and I'm a graduate of Northwestern University. Got my doctorate there in 1974. And um, I've been a practicing psychologist for many years and began in this field of neurofeedback in 1992. We train the brain to control the body. For example, it's been used for warming hands, for controlling heart rate. The application on the brain has been a, a recent application, and uh, sensors or electrodes are placed on the brain, and we can actually train people to change the amplitude of brain waves and the location of brain waves. Bayer's current protocol, developed at Northwestern University, maps patients' brains and can find the presence of a genetic signature for depression in brain waves. Her treatment essentially coaches the brain as it learns to control its moods and alter its symmetry if necessary. Uh, we began to experiment with uh, de people who were depressed and who wanted to try this new treatment and uh, to see if, number one, they had the signature for depression, which they did, and whether they could change it. And they could. Dr. Bear and her husband, Rufus Bear, have been practicing neurofeedback for the last 16 years, and her clinic has seen above average success rates during that time. Well, I would say to be modest, 75 to 85 percent. In actuality, maybe it's a little higher. The people who don't respond are generally people who have other things going on in their brain. For example, we have a woman who was hit, in the ba hit by a baseball bat in, the, in her forehead and has a lot of very irregular brain activity. She's not responding right now. We have to deal with normalizing her brain before she'll really be able to respond. Despite the clinical success, Dr. Baer says many doctors and psychotherapists remain hesitant to neurofeedback treatment. Pills continue to be the most common way to treat depression, simply because neurofeedback is less profitable for pharmaceutical companies. And other doctors just don't know a procedure like this is out there. Well, it's, you know, the whole field of neurofeedback is just really beginning to get well known now. A lot of doctors, neurologists, psychiatrists have never heard of it. As more and more brainwave activity studies are funded, the use of the procedure promises to be more widespread. In the meantime, Dr. Bear has gone past merely treating depression and expanded to treat other ailments. I don't want you to be sad for too long. We'll just let it go a full minute. Keep on the sad thought. Um, in addition to depression, we treat anxiety disorders, stroke, we treat tic disorders, uh, epilepsy, um, other motor disorders. At the end of the day, it's modern day physical therapy for the brain. And it's a therapy that's changing lives. In a way, it is. <laughs> People generally start out happy and have to go down. So if we did it for five minutes, you'd see your whole asymmetry change. But we didn't want to do that to you. Yeah. <laughs>